I beg to differ debate tournament is live on Nigeria Info. Our moderators, our impeccable jurist, our creator and keeper. I'm here to support the motion now. Yes, yeah, to oppose the motion, we say. In this age of computer, internet, and social media, teaching Nigerian language in our schools will put Nigerians at risk. Out of over 100 auditions, 16 secondary school students from all over Lagos have been chosen. I hereby oppose the motion with this following point of mind. The science of language to people is well illustrated in the Bible story about the Tower of Babel. God has to to regulate social media means to give access, power to the government for them to control and determine the content of Tune in to hear the leaders of tomorrow debate the questions of today. One winner, one million naira. With your moderator, Sandra Ezequistili, starts on Monday, 8th of November to Thursday, 25th November 2021. It airs from Monday to Wednesdays at 4 p.m. and Thursdays at 5 p.m. For advertising, sponsorship, and partnership, contact us at 703 498 4352. That is 703 498 4352. The I Beg to Differ tournament is here. It's day three of the round of 16, and you've listened to the first two students, uh, first very sharp uh, students from Lagos uh, debate for a chance to win one million naira at the end of this tournament. We have one winner from the first round, Hamid Olarawaji. Congratulations again. Uh, to, uh, right now, let's move on to the next group of debaters. Our first one is in class nine at Avicenna International School. She's 13 years old. Tanvita Kaushik. Welcome to I Beg to Differ. It's lovely to be here. Thank you so much. All right. Our second debater is a 14-year-old SS2 student at Prince Dow College. Miriam Adekunle. Welcome to I Beg to Differ. Thank you, Ma. Mm. Uh, these contestants have been told the rules, but here they are again. I'll give you a topic. One of you will be in support. One of you will oppose. First is the presentation round. You will each first get two minutes to present your positions. And feel free to use up your two minutes. It's yours to use up. And then the rebuttal round, you'll each get another two minutes to address the points your opponents made. Feel free to use up your two minutes. I will judge both rounds based on number, quality, and originality of unique points made, clarity of thought and eloquence of presentation, Number of opponents points addressed, strength of your rebuttal of each point. Now, you already know your topic, but for Lagos, everybody should learn how to code. Now, let's decide who's going to support and who's going to oppose. I've got two pieces of paper in my hand. One person chooses, one person chooses after the first person. Ah, oh, huge sigh of relief there. What do you choose? Opposing. Opposing. All right. I see you're relieved. Okay, then. It's time for round one, the presentation round. Let's start with the motion supporter and then the motion opposer. April 29th, 2020. To most of us, this might seem like just another ordinary day, but to Jennifer Bennett, this marks the worst of her life. Someone had been watching her through her webcam. They had taken compromising pictures of her and they had held it for a ransom. She paid the ransom, but if she had basic coding skills, she could have verified the email address and then tracked it and then reported it to the police. Good day, honorable judges, our ever attentive audience, our esteemed timekeeper and my fellow co-debater. My name is Tanvita Kaushik. I'm 13 years old. I'm representing Avicenna School and I'm for the motion that states, should everyone learn to code? Co Coding is defined as being able to program in a variety of different softwares, but another fundamental skill that provides us with is security. Especially in a country like Nigeria, wherein COVID is having huge impacts on the job loss, it usually helps to have a heightened sense of security. Along with that, Norton Security states that 2,200 people are hacked globally every single day. Imagine what coding can help with that. Another important thing is that the IMF has stated that technological advances have allowed um, a transfer of data throughout borders to be more efficient, which means that if you have coding in your skill sets, it's extremely important and very appreciated in the job industry when you're trying to get a job. Did you know that the coding industry grows by 13% in demand every single year? This means that it is extremely easy to get a job in the coding industry once you have the necessary t techniques and once you have the necessary CV. 
Now, moving on to life skills, I've not even gotten to the life skills that coding gives you, from problem solving when a code goes wrong to resilience when your code goes wrong. In fact, it even gives you a new global perspective because you can take IT and globalization into consideration when you're evaluating diplomatic affairs. Lastly, let's talk AI. Artificial intelligence is known to be the future, but a common disadvantage is the fact that we don't really know what's going to happen, like if there are errors in the code. However, if there are more people in the coding sector, that means there are more people to problem solve and evaluate in AI, therefore making it more beneficial for the whole of humanity, possibly even like avoiding a World War Three between AI and humanity, right? So our jobs, like the next, the next set of jobs in the next 10 years are going to be so diversified due to the rise of AI and we need to start moving out of our school syllabus. We need to start gaining new skills, which is why we need to learn coding. We need to see the future and we need to be prepared for it and we need to see coding as a basic life skill that we all must have. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Well done, Tanvita. Good job. All right. Now let's move over to Miriam Adekunle. Your time starts now. In my opinion, not everyone should learn how to code. But every student are better manda mandated, are better not mandated to coding because they are not interested in it. This job called coding require doesn't only require creativity and uh, other programming um, skills. It requires passion. Without passion, you can't get anywhere. Without passion, you won't have the feeling to move forward, to put all your efforts into whatever you want to do. Without passion, I wouldn't be here, you wouldn't be here, she wouldn't be here. But before I proceed, I would like to give honor to Woman Noise YouTube by saying, good day, my dignified moderator, my worthy opponent, and my attentive listeners. I, Adekunle Miriam of Prince Dow College, humbly oppose the motion which says should everyone learn how to code. Coding is very terrible to the mental health. Most coders lack sleep, and when they finally get to sleep, their brain keeps functioning. That is not sleep. The reason why their brain keeps, fun um, keeps functioning is because they keep thinking, if I do this, if I do this, if I do this, then it's a result of this. Then they get up back going to the screen to try what they have um, thought about. Coding is also bad for the mental health because it causes insomnia, anxiety, depression, and many more. Moreover, mo the reason why most people want to learn how to code is because of they see others engaging in it. They engage in it. If everyone were to jump off a bridge, would you do it? Probably I think we all would. And in the normal world, it's absurd for Mr. A to do what Mr. B is doing. This coding um, occupation is just like a girl's hairstyle. If you see it and say, oh, I love this hairstyle, then another person sees it, oh, I love this hairstyle, then it keeps going on like that. It's going to get outdated. Then nobody, then not everyone, it won't be spe as special as it is. It won't be special anymore. Just that's why I say it's like a hairstyle. Also, coding does not really help everyone in the sense that it it's keeps giving people the impression that if I engage in coding, I'll earn a lot of money. I'll, it's just like Canada. People think if I go there, it's like a world of paradise, a, world, um, a country of paradise, a place where you can enjoy and have fun. But if you go there now, you see people living on the streets, untidy, homeless. That's how programming is. After engaging in it, you feel distressed that, oh, I, I wish I shouldn't have engaged in this. And it's too late to back down. Coding also does not help in solving all the problems. If we live, it, if we... And if the people who do not know anything about coding engage in it, you they get to discover bugs, bugs that no one even knew existed, and which is which may be very destructive and unreliable. Also, the fact that you said um, coding costs, uh, you said. Sorry. Thank you very much. Good job. Well done. Very very proud of the points you've made today. All right, then. Now it's time for the rebuttal round. You've both made very, very, very great points. I'm sure that the people who are in the IT industry listening to the show will relate very deeply to what uh, Miriam said about the lack of sleep that coders have to experience. But let's move on to the rebuttal round. I'll start this time with the supporter. Uh, Tamvita, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, my wonderful co-debater mentioned the fact that there might be a lack of interest and passion, and passion is fundamental to being able to excel. However, when you started doing math in school, you didn't like it. 
my friends didn't like it. I didn't like it. However, it is something that we do need because as we progress throughout the world, we do need math, whether it's buying something at a shop or whether it's, you know, solving complex simultaneous equations. We do... Of course, passion is necessary, but when you start, you're obviously forced to start it. But once you're forced to start it, the passion grows within you. You start to love it. And of course, some things are not meant for everyone, which is why the minority can like sort of drop out from coding. But if everyone learns to code, it will be extremely beneficial. Secondly, it talks about mental health and how the brain keeps functioning even when you're asleep. That's exactly why we need more coders. That's exactly why we need more people. So that this weight of, you know, carrying the IT industry is more spread out amongst the population of the world. If there are more people, in the coding industry, that means more people to help with teamwork and other codes. Now, he talks about peer pressure and how this might all just be a trend that's going to die out eventually. The world is moving towards technology. There's no way it's going to die out. And the whole world runs on trends. The clothes that we wear, the hair that we have. It's beneficial in one way and disadvantageous in the other way. That's how trends work. But this trend is here to stay because our world is running on it. Politics is running on it. The economy is running on it. Another important fact that you mentioned is that coding, that most people just enter the coding industry because it gives you money. Well, we never promised that, you know, if you enter coding, you're going to get lots of money. That's not what we said. However... We just said you're going to have a higher chance of being selected because you have a varied skill set. In fact, 50% of jobs in the USA require you to have basic IT skills, which you can get if you know how to code, from graphic design to being able to actually code and program on different sets of softwares. Now, another important, your last point was that people who know nothing might start to discover bugs. Again, another important reason why we need coding. When people start to discover bugs that we never knew about, it helps us normal people who know nothing about coding to actually, you know, understand what this bug is and avoid it in the future. And Obviously, people are going to know nothing before they start to code. That's why we're saying everybody should learn to code. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, then. <laughs> Miriam, the floor is yours. So, um, in my opponent's first point, she said a story about a woman who was um, who um, something happened to and they asked for a ransom. And she said if, the, if she had knew, known how to code, then she would have found the person. But do you know that this... She, if she this coding, um, the code if she knew how to code, these people also might have known how to code and then hacked into her own computer and then she wouldn't have found anything anymore. And in your second point, you said um, coding companies need um, people engage in coding for the for them to get jobs in coding companies and all that. You said they grow. The coding companies grow because of the money the people collect from them. If, though, if they are not, lo um, if they don't get the money, they are being paid. Again, then that company won't grow. Cause, okay, you are the owner of this company, and I go to you. I want to um, do this job. How much will I be paid, and all that? Then you later you stop paying me my money. The company won't grow anymore. People engage in it for the money. They, some don't even have interest in it. They just go out there, learn it, and then go and say, oh, I want to do this job. Because they, they would lie to you about, what the remain, the, about why they want to engage in the job. The main reason people are engaging in it is either for the money or because people are doing it or because they are forced to do it. And you, and you said in my point that, that is, um, if people sleep, they think. Then they think. So... If they, if they keep thinking like that over and over again, it may cause them to have mental um, disorder. Now, I would like to ask you this question. Would you like any of your ch uh, family member or children to have mental disorder all in the name of learning how to code? Thank you. All right, then. Thank you. Well done. Good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> mm. Thank you both for making my job difficult. <laughs> Lagos, if you just tuned in, you're listening to I Beg to Differ. It is uh, a debate tournament. We currently have secondary school students in this tournament. And you have listened to Tamvita Kaushik. She is in class nine. She is 13 years old. She schools at Avicenna International School. Our second debater is 14 years old. She's in SS2. She's at Prince Dow College. Her name is Miriam Adekunle. And uh, they've both talked about whether or not 
not everybody should learn how to code. Now, I wish, of course, that um, we could carry both people uh, along to the quarterfinals, but with everything, there must be one. So thank you both for a wonderful debate. Uh, the debater moving on to the quarter, quarterfinals with a total point of 16 is... Um, Tanvita Kaushik, congratulations. Well done. Thank you so much. So Tanvita made five points during her presentation and Miriam made five points during her presentation. During the rebuttal, Tanvita made six points and uh, uh, Miriam made one point. As far as eloquence, Tanvita scored five, Miriam scored three, and that's why we got to the final uh, points of 16 for Tanvita and nine for Miriam Adekunle. Well done. Congratulations. You just qualified for the quarterfinals next week. By tomorrow, we're going to let you know who you match up against. We'll let you know the day and time you'll come and debate. We'll also let you know what topic you'll be debating. And thank you for taking part, uh, Miriam. We're going to do this again sometime soon, and we hope that you participate in the future. Lagos, this is all the time we have. I wish you had more time. But before we go, we have gifts, Cutsy Nigeria Info FM. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy days and your busy schedule to come and give us your minds here on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Lagos, you can find me online, Sandra Ezekwesili. Uh, that's where I will be if you want to talk about this, if you want to talk about sponsoring this, if you want to talk about about uh, being a part of this next year when we bring uh, bring it back for a second round. Don't go away because coming up, a conversation about people who give you loans and then start to send messages to all your contacts on WhatsApp. What's that about? How do you feel about it? Don't go away. Ninety nine point three Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info ninety nine point three. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. Ninety nine point three Nigeria Info. Let's talk.